I'm greatly looking forward to the primates meeting next month in Canterbury. It's such a privilege to have these meetings. It's an extraordinary feeling to have the leaders of all the provinces of the Anglican churches gathering together to pray, to encourage one another, to weep with one another, to celebrate with one another. And this time is particularly exciting because we're going to have 16 new primates since January 2016, an extraordinary turnover. And there will be a whole lot of fresh energy and fresh excitement and no doubt some tough questions which will come from them not having been there before. And I think that's going to be fabulous. We will miss those who are not there, uh, miss them very much. And we also, I also uh, am aware that possibly as many as six, possibly less, uh, will not be there either through health or because they have chosen not to be at the moment. Uh, in January 2016, we spent a week in Canterbury in what was for me, I think one of the most memorable weeks of my life, really one of the most demanding, most extraordinary, most honest, as people struggled with the issues we were, we were dealing with. The key thing that came out of that was a unanimous vote from those present that we would walk together. It might be at a slight distance, but we would walk together. We also set up a task group with a range of opinions across the communion and representation, uh, including uh, people not in the primates meeting, uh, in order to look at the issues that were dividing us, obviously the, particularly the issue of human sexuality. That group will give a preliminary report at the meeting in October. And I know they've been working very hard and I want to say how grateful I am and I'm sure everyone is for the effort and the thought that they've put into that. But one of the most extraordinary things of the primates meeting is the hearing and the sharing and the reflecting together on the great issues that affect our world. At our last meeting, despite all the stresses and strains, there was an energy in the room when we talked about evangelism. There was an energy in the room when we talked about the environment and climate change, about war and peace, about refugees and human trafficking. Uh, these were things that caught people in their hearts and in their minds. And I remember coming out of one of the meetings last time and saying to my wife, this is why the communion exists. To bring together that energy and be those who change the world around us. And those are subjects we'll be talking about this time as well. We are going to discuss climate change. We are going to discuss refugees. Primates will come from provinces torn apart by conflict or from provinces where there is persecution of Christians from provinces which are devastated by rising waters, from provinces where economic crisis and hardship is a reality of everyday life, from provinces where their numbers are growing and provinces where they're shrinking, from provinces where all is together and others where the stresses and strains are deeply felt. And whatever it is, no one's going to be there triumphant. We will all be those who come as disciples of Jesus Christ, to worship him, to meet with him, to listen to the Spirit of God, and to comfort, console, encourage, and celebrate with one another. And I am so looking forward to that. All the great issues of the world will be brought in the presence of God, together with the primates, in each of our hearts, and in sorrow and in joy. And so my prayer for this meeting next month, and I ask everyone in the communion and everyone else of goodwill to join in praying for us, is that we are caught up by the Spirit. That with our differences and disagreements, we find unity in Christ afresh. 
that we walk onwards together. To use a song famously sung in a place I used to live in, Liverpool, that we know that we will never walk alone because we walk with Christ and with one another. Thank you.